Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight. We thank you that we're in your house. We give you glory, honor, and praise God. And we bless your name. And now, Lord, as we're about to go into your word again, uh, I pray in the name of Jesus that you breathe afresh upon it. Uh, I pray one more time again, Holy Spirit of the living God, uh, have your own sweet divine way. Uh, let your will be accomplished. Uh, and God, we give you glory and in praise uh, as we tell you thanks in Jesus' name. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Pick your Bibles up, praise God, and we'll go to a theme scripture. Praise God. Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. And we'll be reading from verse 1 to 4. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And it reads, everybody on the same page? Amen. 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 And it says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they all were, they, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a, might, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise God. Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the you Lord. may be seated at this time. Praise God. And praise God. Our theme tonight is Lord, fill us with your power. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We just read, praise God, where, praise God, they were all in one, one place and in one accord. And we started from today, praise God. And remember, Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Praise God, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the hurt. Praise God. And remember Jesus said to his disciple, I don't want you to leave and go out into the world, praise God, and to be a witness for me, praise God, until you be endued with power from an eye. And he commanded them to tarry, praise God, in Jerusalem, praise God, uh, until that power come, praise God. Uh, and praise God, I believe uh, the disciples, uh, when they hear what the master commanded them, uh, praise God. Uh, even if they uh, didn't want to obey, they decided to obey. Uh, you see, because Peter remembered, uh, he remembered the day uh, he denied Christ, uh, he knew he was save. Uh, he knew he believed in God. Uh, he knew he had a love of God in his heart. Uh, but he began to realize uh, that he had a weakness. Praise God. Um, that he needed to overcome uh, his weakness and his fears. Uh, and so he decided. Uh, and I believe he said to his uh, um, um, disciples, the disciples that were with him, uh, let's all go back to Jerusalem. Uh, he said, remember. Remember how we run away Way, uh, remember, uh, remember how we deny Christ. Uh, remember how we turn our back. Uh, and it's not because we didn't love him. Uh, and it's not because we didn't want to serve him. Uh, but because we have our weakness. Uh, and we need to overcome uh, our weakness. Uh, and so they decided. Uh, you see, Peter said, uh, I examine me. And I realize me uh, have a problem, praise God. Uh, and we need to examine me. Uh, it's not about your neighbor. It's not about your friends. Uh, it's not about your family member. It's about you. And it's about me. We need to examine me. 
realize that me have a problem. I need to know what I got. That is an issue I can't overcome by myself. Today I feel like and tomorrow I don't. Today I feel like I'm going up and tomorrow I'm sliding down. I am so sick and tired of the seesaw. I want to settle. You see, I have a desire. I have a desire to do things for the Lord. I want to do great things for God. The me is in the way. Me is a problem. Me think too highly of myself. Me think that I am nothing. Me think that I'm not good enough. Me think and me think I don't want to think no more. I need something more. So Peter said, I don't want to deny him no more. I don't want to be at the back bench no more. I want to come forward. I want to serve God. I want to fulfill the word. I am so tired of being on the back of coming forward but taking two steps backward of making three steps forward and making five steps. I don't want this no more. I am sick and tired of being sick and tired. So he decided, let's go comrades. Let's go. Let's go disciples. Let's go to the upper room. We're going to do what Jesus said. We're going to tarry. We're going to wait. And while we wait, we must be on one accord. I'm going to say to my body, body, line up with the word of God. I'm going to say to my soul, soul, line up with the word of God. I'm going to say to my spirit, spirit, line up with the word of God. I'm going to speak to me. And while I'm speaking to me, you speak to you. He was so sick and tired of not being where God wanted him to be. See, I don't know how you feel. I don't know what's in you. But I feel bad when I can't do what God wants me to do. I hate to fail God. I wish I didn't. Have you ever done something that you did where you wish you didn't do? And when you're done, you feel so bad. As this, I said, God, I'm so sorry for letting you down again. I don't know how you feel, but when I look at what I do, and I know it's going to hand me, uh, going to show off before God. Uh, I said, I got him again. Uh, I feel bad uh, because I let my Lord uh, and Savior down. Uh, I believe Peter uh, and the other disciples uh, felt the same way. Uh, so they decided uh, to tarry. They decided to wait. They decided to do what the Lord wanted them to do. You see, they were in one place, uh, in one accord. Uh, they were all in unity. Praise God. Uh, their spirit line up. Uh, their soul line up. Uh, and they waited. Uh, praise God. Uh, the first day passed, uh, nothing happened. And I believe somebody uh, probably want to say something. Uh, but no, he said, let's sing, I surrender all to Jesus. Uh, I surrender all to him. Uh, I freely give uh, worldly pleasures, uh, all forsaken. Uh, take me, Jesus. Uh, take me now. Uh, I surrender. I surrender all. Day two come. And nothing happened. And praise God. Uh, I begin. Uh, I believe Peter said. Uh, Let's pray some more. Uh, and he said father. I stretch my hand to thee. Uh, no other help. I uh, know. Uh, if thou. Uh, should withdraw thyself from me. Uh, where shall I go. Uh, I'm trusting you Lord. Uh, I'm trusting you God. Uh, and praise God. Uh, they can pray. Third day come. Nothing happened. 
And he said, uh, I'm going up uh, the king's highway. Uh, I'm going up uh, the king's highway. Uh, they keep praying uh, and singing uh, and trusting God. You know why? They realize that by themselves, they can do nothing. You see, when you try something on your own and you realize you fail, and that it didn't line up with God, what God wants. There's a desire, I can't explain it to you until you experience it. There's that feeling of let down when you let God down. And you have to hold yourself not to keep, you know, knocking yourself Why I let God down. And you have to learn to forgive yourself and, you know, believe God forgive you. Because the word declared that uh, if I confess, son, uh, he's faithful and just to forgive me uh, and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Uh, I got to believe the word. Regardless of what the enemy whisper in my mind. So I got to trust God. So you see, he know who he was. And he know what he has done. We need to know who we are. And what we can uh, and are capable of doing. Uh, you see, because unless you know who you are uh, and admit uh, that I am this, uh, that without God, uh, I can be uh, worse than I ever believe. Uh, then before we understand uh, what God can do. Hallelujah. So you see, Peter and the other disciples uh, face the reality that who they are was aligning up with the word of God. Uh, who they are uh, was really what God wants. Uh, I realize uh, who I am. Uh, and every time I read the scripture, I had to admit uh, and say, God, uh, you know the word said. Uh, we were dogs uh, and sorcerers, God. Uh, we were far uh, from the commonwealth of Israel. Uh, but to God be the glory. Uh, great things he has done. When you went to the cross, you redeem me and you make a way that I can be called a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You change my name, you change everything about me. But if I will submit, not only will my name change, but everything about me will change. So, Peter and the disciples. Decided to wait. Five days pass, And he waited. And they said I'm trusting. Lord indeed. Blessed lamb. Of Calvary. Oh. Savior divine. Hear me now. While I pray. And take all my guilt away. You see God. I to take the guilt. Of how we feel sometimes. You see, it's us because, you know, sometimes we do some things and it takes us so long to really let go the guilt into the hand of God uh, and let God take the guilt from us. Uh, you know, sometimes you do something and the guilt rides you uh, on three days. Uh, it's still bothering you. Uh, and the Bible says only a moment with Jesus uh, a pardon receive. Uh, and it has nothing to do with God. Uh, it's just the enemy uh, beating us uh, and beating us uh, and beating us. Uh, and sometimes we forget uh, what the world Word said uh, that a moment with Jesus uh, a pardon received. We have to learn during those times to let go. You know, and believe God. You see, because he's not a father with the rod. Praise God, because if he was a father with the rod, uh, we wouldn't be here. Uh, we need to remember that the blood of Jesus uh, Christ uh, was shed uh, and that he will wash and forgive uh, if we truly will repent. Uh, yes, the blood of Jesus is still flowing uh, and because it's still flowing, uh, there is an opportunity uh, for us to live uh, and be made righteous in his sight. So Peter, hold on. And he encouraged the other disciples. And they said, five days gone. He said, don't count the days. 
Don't count the days, brothers uh, and everyone else. Uh, let's occupy. Uh, let's pray. Uh, let's line up with the word of God. Uh, let's read the word. Uh, don't count the time. Uh, don't count the hours. Uh, if you count, it look long. Uh, but if you keep singing uh, and keep praying uh, and be occupy uh, until it come, uh, it will come uh, when we are ready. You see, because God knows uh, he no more heart. Uh, I remember uh, in the word uh, when Jesus asked Peter um, and he said, uh, Peter uh, loveth these uh, more than me. Uh, he said, loveth me uh, more than these. Uh, and Peter said, uh, yeah, Lord, uh, I love you. Uh, and Jesus asked him again, uh, Peter, uh, loveth me uh, more than these. Uh, and he said, Lord, uh, you know I love Love you and then Jesus asked him a third time and he said Peter loveth me more than these and Peter was grieved and it bought his spirit it got to his soul and he said and cry out out of a heart and soul and he said Lord you know I love you more than these uh, Jesus is asking us uh, you want to be filled uh, with my power love us me uh, more than these uh, he asks us once uh, we say yes uh, but then we go back uh, and do it again uh, he asks us a third time uh, we say yes uh, and we still go back uh, and he's still asking again, uh, love is me uh, more than these. Uh, we need to begin uh, to love the Lord uh, more than life, uh, more than our family, uh, more than our friends, uh, more than everything uh, in this world. Uh, he said in his word, uh, if you don't love me uh, more than your father uh, and your mother uh, and all your family, uh, you're not worthy of me. Uh, so Jesus is asking, uh, Love is me more than these. Do we truly love God? Or do everything else that is important to us, whether it's our family, our children, our parents, friends, whoever it is, do they matter more than Almighty God? Love is God more than these. We need the anointing but love is these more than God. Oh love is God more than these. Are we willing to make the sacrifice and let go? You see because if we don't then praise God we're not going anywhere. We're not reaching anywhere. The anointing and the power that was ours that could be ours we won't receive. We have to love God more than these. Yes. And I think that's where some of us struggle because we see we don't understand that if we love God and more than everything else that matters, after a while, we begin to understand that we love them too. And we'll do everything in our powers to bring them in because we truly love them. And then we will begin to understand what the love of God means when we love our brethren and love our family and love the saints and love the things of God. We got to love God more than these. Uh, so we need the power of the anointing uh, to do this. Praise God. Uh, so our theme tonight is uh, fill us with your power. But we got to love God. Uh, and we got to desire his name uh, more than our necessary food. Uh, more than the clothes on our back uh, and the roof of our head head uh, and the shoes on our feet. Uh, this which we have on uh, mustn't matter anymore. Uh, what matters is almighty God uh, and what he wants. So the, the scripture says they were in one place and they were in unity and they were together and the seventh day came 
And maybe because they realized that seven is God, perfect number, nothing happened. They said, surely it will come today. Surely it will happen. But nothing happened. You see, it's not about your timing or my timing. It's about God's timing. You see, he knows uh, our heart and he knows exactly where we are and he knows our mind. Uh, even when we pretend like God don't know, uh, he always knows and he knows exactly where we are. Uh, and he knows when we're ready. You see, you can lie to me uh, and tell me you're ready. I can lie to you and tell you I'm ready. But the one person, uh, whether we lie to yes or no, he already know whether we are ready or not. Uh, so right now, uh, if you will but believe uh, and confess uh, and trust him uh, and pour out your heart, uh, he will do it. So the Bible says, while they were there tarrying and waiting, and the ninth day come. And then the tenth day, you know, people are bustling around in Jerusalem because people start coming in to celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And praise God. God timing is impeccable. Praise God. You see, because God said to them, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the hottermost part of the earth. God's timing is impeccable. And praise God. They were at a place where they didn't care. Remember, they were Jews. And they were would want to celebrate uh, the feast of Pentecost uh, but they desire God so much uh, that that day uh, didn't matter anymore uh, they wanted God so much uh, that that day uh, they didn't care about uh, they stayed locked up uh, in one place uh, and in one accord uh, and that's what we need to do uh, we need to lock up uh, and not necessarily the door uh, but lock up our minds uh, and lock up our soul uh, and lock up our heart uh, in one place uh, in one accord uh, calling on the name uh, of our Lord and Savior uh, Jesus Christ uh, being on one accord uh, with ourselves so that God can come and he can fill us with his power and so they were not careful about the feast of Pentecost anymore. You see, I believe maybe day five, they're saying maybe if we get it now, we can go outside and celebrate like everybody else. But it wasn't about that for God anymore. You see, they God bring them to the place where it didn't matter anymore. It is what God wants. And it's what God will do. And that's what God is saying to us. Uh, it mustn't matter anymore. Uh, everything else doesn't matter anymore. Uh, what really matters uh, is what God wants uh, and what God will do. Uh, what does matter to you? Uh, is it your friend? Uh, is it your family? Uh, it is it everything outside uh, other than God. Uh, we got to reach the place in God uh, where all that matters uh, is God and what he wants to do. So we are asking God to fill us with his power. Where are we? Seriously, where are we? Does God really matter? Are we so caught up with everything around us that we are not even hearing God? We're so caught up with the climate that God can't even speak to us. We're so narrow-minded and so focused on what we want that God can't get an edgeway in. Where are we tonight? See, God is looking for people that he can pour his power out on and that he can anoint and use for his glory. A people that will say, God, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. A people that will say, all to Jesus I surrender. 
all to him I freely give. Worldly pleasures all forsaken. Take me, Jesus, take me now. A people that will say like Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. A people that is willing to make the sacrifice uh, for him. Uh, you see, because I know uh, that his promise are true. Uh, and if he's coming for the church, uh, out of the church, uh, are we the church? Uh, or the church that is coming out of the church? Uh, which is it? Praise God. Uh, who are we tonight? Uh, we want the anointing. Uh, yes. Uh, but is it on our term uh, or on God's term? Is the anointing for us uh, or for God? Uh, is the anointing for us uh, to show off uh, or is it for God? Uh, is the anointing for us to take the glory and exalt ourselves uh, or is it humbling uh, and for God? Uh, where are we tonight? Uh, will we be like the disciple? Uh, we will tarry uh, and wait uh, and we will be uh, in one accord. Uh, you see, the power will fall but we all got to be on one accord we all got to be in one place we all have to say have the same mind the same words the same thought we all have to be where God can anoint us as a people as a person where are we tonight? Where are we? You see, God was able to come down in the book of Acts because they were together. They're all saying the same thing. Today, churches are all over the place. You see, because we minimize the power of the Holy Ghost and we put him aside and he's such a gentleman, praise God uh, that even those that are feel, uh, you know, they, they're, not, they're not establishing the anointing, you see the anointing is the work uh, that the Holy Spirit will do when we say the anointing is on you we're talking about the manifestation uh, of the Holy Spirit of God uh, that's what we talk about uh, where is the anointing uh, where is the work, uh, when I look at you uh, do I see the anointing uh, moving all over you? Uh, when you look at me, uh, do you see the anointing uh, moving all over me? Uh, yes, that's what God is looking for. A uh, people, a uh, people that is ready uh, for his power. Can we be like the disciples in the book of Acts? Can we lay aside all all the weights and the sin that so easily beset us. Can we own up to them? Can we say, God, I got a problem. I need you to fix. I don't know your problem. You got to know it because, you see, I'm not home with you. Not in your heart. I don't see what you do. I might know because the Holy Spirit might reveal it, but I still don't know. He don't give me that. He might say something is wrong. But you got to know. You have to know. Like I have to know. So tonight, we are asking God to fill us with your power. He said, fill us, Lord. And I'm not just saying fill us. I'm also saying, Lord, fill me. I need the anointing too. You see, because I know when I leave here and go out there, I got to face what I need to face. So I need the anointing to help me. Because when you don't have the anointing, I'm telling you when things come up against you, you act like an unsafe. Your words are unsafe. Your actions are unsafe. Your thoughts are unsafe. Everything about us is unsafe. Somebody standing by, known as to be a Christian, is shocked. Because they're like, who is that? Because we don't have the anointing. So tonight, as we read the word, it says the disciples were in one place. They were in one accord. And they were patiently waiting for the anointing. 
power of God. They're waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. Where are we tonight? Are we doing anything to allow the Holy Spirit to come? Because if you need me and you look at me, I don't know what you want. I'm not even looking in your direction. No, I'm not. I'm not coming your way at all. I don't know you want me. But if you open your mouth, and if you call me, I hear a sound at first, and I say, wait a minute, did somebody come? And then I, you see, because you call me the first time, my ears now perk up. Because I said, I know somebody called me. And then the voice might sound a little muffled. But then I said, let me listen again. Is it because my ears are up? And when you call, I said, I know I hear Sister Brown. I said, let me turn around. I said, let you call me the third time. And when she called me the third time, I, I don't expect the call to be prophetess. Is it because she called me like that the first time? And she didn't get my attention. And she must call louder the second time. And when she called the second time, and I didn't turn in that direction, she's supposed to call even louder the third time. I remember when blind Bartimaeus wanted healing, and he called Jesus the first time. He didn't get no attention, and he called Jesus the second time, louder than he did. And Jesus didn't answer, and he said, what? What? Absolutely. And he opened his mouth and called Jesus. And he was on the top of his lungs. And he didn't care what nobody said. You know why? Because he needed what he needed. Do we really need Hekayasa? Ayasikayasa. Do we Hekandu di Bikesa? Asa. Do we actually need? He can't need a mercy. The power, Hakayasa, of the Holy Ghost. Do we really need it? Hallelujah. Because if we do, uh, we will open our mouth uh, and we will call. Uh, you see, when Bright Bartimius needed the power, he needed what he needed. Uh, you see, uh, he didn't care about the, the arms uh, they gave him. Uh, he didn't care about the shoes uh, they gave him. Uh, he know if I receive my sight, if I can but only see, you see, you want to lead me or give me nothing. Uh, if I can just see. That's what God is saying. To receive the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is to see. Uh, to receive uh, the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is to have sight. Uh, to see. Uh, yes, to receive uh, the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is to have direction. Uh, to have the power of the Holy Ghost uh, is to know where you're going. That's what the power does. It will help you to overcome. And not that troubles are going to go. But you will look at trouble. And you will dance around it. Uh, and trample Hekayas. Uh, and trample it. Uh, and say God. Uh, you are my deliverer. You won't jump up and run. Uh, or make rash decisions. Uh, but you will trust God. Uh, and say God. Uh, you're a way maker. You're a deliverer. Uh, you are my all in all. Uh, my everything. Uh, I trust you. That's what the anointing does. Make you look past you. Look past what you feel. Look past what you believe. And know what the word of God said. And act accordingly. So the disciples decided. You see that's a conscious decision you and I have to make. You see the book of Joel said it's a promise unto you. And to 
your children's children, and as to as many as the Lord our God shall call. You see, it's not a force. It's a promise and a gift that you and I can receive, but we have to desire it and want it and see the necessity of it and the importance of having the anointing in our lives. Not just to be at saving station. Too many Christians today are still at saving station. Two step forward, three step backward. Today you're saved, tomorrow you're not. See so, God is coming. We can't be doing this up and down. We need to be stable. And the only way to get stable is to have the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, saints, if we didn't need it, Jesus, God our Father, would never tell us. He's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Have he not said it? Shall he not do it? Or have he not spoken? Shall not it come to pass? Come on. If we could live, look at the children of Israel. Sometimes we want to criticize them. Come on, stop criticizing them. We are just like them. They were up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And we talk about, oh, they don't want a circle. Of course they want a circle. They need the power of the Holy Ghost. They need a filling of the Holy Spirit. Today you love, tomorrow you hate. You bother me today, I hate you. Then tomorrow, not too bad. It takes me three days to overcome the hate. Sometimes a whole week to forget the hate. Two weeks and the hate is still there. Six months and we're still struggling up the hill with the hate basket. We need the power of God to overcome. Where Jesus will say to us, lay it at my feet and trust me. Put it down and believe me. That's what God is saying. We need it. If sometimes we have the anointing in our life and we have to call Jesus 20 times. When the self starts to raise up. And that's why the Bible said we should lay aside all the sin and the way. That's why we should feed the spirit. Seriously, we should read the word of God constantly. Because unless we feed the spirit, man, then it won't have the victory the way we want to. Watching TV, Facebook, what you call them thing? All of them stuff. Social media. Take up our time. I'm telling you. It takes up so much time. Time that we could be praying. Time that we could be reading the word of God. It takes up so much time. If you need to do it, then do it for work. Do it if you're looking at a job. But all the feed, the thing that they're sending, what do we gain? What do we receive? You know, years ago, when I just got married, I used to love watch television. That's what's my ammo. I love television shows. And I used to watch it a lot. I got married, still doing the same thing. You know, you think you're married, it changed. No, nothing changed. And, and that's something you all need to know. You have to really school yourself to change some things about you when you realize you're married because it can be a problem. And I remember, Bishop didn't know about it was, but he re realized that, wait a minute, you watch TV, you watch a lot of TV, and, and I kind of brush it off, you know. He said, I don't think that's good. But, you know, you know, you know I still watch TV. And I never forgot how God broke that out of me. Never forgot I was supposed, I was, he told me he was coming in at a certain time and that he had to go somewhere and I had to cook, you didn't know, but he had to, I had to cook dinner and I, I think I had Sashley at that time and um, I sit down there, watch TV, show sweet me. 
And saints, when I looked, time was on me. But before that, just before that, I hear the Spirit said to me, call them! Just like that. I said, what? He said, yes. You sit here watching this TV show. Call them now on the television and tell them to come clean your house. And tell them to come cook your meal. And no, ju he just started to name out all the things that I should have done that day. And he said, call them. And I just broke down and started crying. And he said to me, they are making their money. What about your life? And from that day to this day, I was done. They on social media are making their money. What about your life? Where are you going? What are you doing? Can you honestly say, God, I'm ready for your power? Can you say, I let go of all of this? Can we put down our different devices, whether it's our iPad, our computers, our phones? It's not because it's bad. It's because of what we do. God can't get no attention. Sometimes he want to speak to us, but we're so caught up with the nonsense that's on social media. We don't even have time to hear him. We don't even know what he's saying. And some, and I'm talking to the young people, and the adults that are here, we're so caught up with the chatting. Because a lot of us are not so good with the, the media thing. But with the chatting for sure. I mean, we gossip. We don't stop talking. Even talk the things we shouldn't be talking. And we're so caught up with it. And if it's not the, 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 the chatting, we watch everything nonsense on the television. We don't know if it's lie, true, makeup story, nothing. But we believe all what they're saying. So adults have it too. It might be slightly different, but it's the same problem. We're not hearing God. And for sure he's coming again. So where are we? If God said to each one of us tonight, any one of us, behold, set your house in order. I'm coming for you tonight. Can we honestly say, God, like um, Stephen, when he's stoned, being stoned, he said, I see Jesus standing at the Father's right hand. Can we say that? We're not being stoned. You just saying, come in. Are we going to be like Ezekiah? God, please, please, you can't come yet. I'm not ready. What can we say? Seriously. What will we say? Every time at the end of church, we say to the Lord, let the words of my mouth, I think we just flippantly say these things. And the meditation of my heart be accepted in that side, oh Lord, my son, blah, 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 blah. That's what we say. But have we ever seriously taught on it? We leave in. And we are asking God, well, when we leave here, go home, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptably in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer for the rest of this week. Every time. But is it true? So as I close tonight, saints, just want to encourage each and every one of you, young and older, myself please let's get it right young people desire God more than your necessary food older adults desire God more than your own family I'm telling you it's worth it I got to that place where it didn't matter anymore and God I promise you God will take care of them better than you taking care of your own family I am a testimony to that God take care of them he blessed them he, he worked miracles sometimes you forgot to, to pray about the, the blue letter that is in their life sometimes you don't even know about it and he takes care of it 
Sometimes in our frustration, when they get on top of our nerves, we don't even remember to pray. But because you desire, and I desire God more than anything else, he takes care of it for us. And he fixes it. So I just want to encourage us tonight. Let's do what the apostles did. They gather in one place, in one accord. And they were in together. And Peter make up his mind. And he decided. And all the other apostles. That we are going to wait. Until we be endued with power from an eye. Pest. Pentecost already came and Pentecost is still here with us. Will you and you and you and you and me allow Pentecost to come into our lives so that God's name can be praised, God's name will be magnified, God's name will be lifted up and God can use us all for his glory. I pray you allow Pentecost in you tonight as you trust God in Jesus' name. Thank you.